areas enclosed by parametric curves. Now we know that the area under a curve y is equal to f of x from a to b goes from is the following where that function is greater than or equal to zero. Now if the curve is traced out once by parametric equations where x is equal to f of t and y is equal to g of t where t is in between alpha and beta then we can calculate an area formula by using the substitution rule for the following. Now, for definite integrals as follows, okay, if we have a function in terms of y, dx, going from a to b, we would then use x is equal to a, where t is either alpha or beta, and when x is equal to b, t is going to be the remaining value. So we're going from alpha to beta, we have g of t, and the derivative of f of t, meaning f prime of t dt. Or we would go from beta to alpha with the same functions. Now what we want to do is we want to find the area under one arch of the cycloid. So if we graph the parametric equations x is equal to r times theta minus sine theta, y is equal to r times 1 minus the cosine of theta. And therefore this is one arch of the cycloid, which is going from 0 to 2 pi. So one arch of the cycloid is given by the following. So theta is in between 0 and 2 pi. Now using the substitution rule with y is equal to r times 1 minus the cosine of theta and therefore the, the derivative dx is equal to r times 1 minus the cosine theta d theta then we have the following. So the area which goes from 0 to 2 pi r, y dx, goes from 0 to 2 pi. Now the first function is g of t. So therefore g of t represents the, first func the second function here, which is r times 1 minus the cosine theta. And then going back to this, the, this part, which is f prime of t, well the derivative of, d, this, of x, meaning dx, is now going to equal r times 1 minus the cosine of theta. So we have r times 1 minus the cosine of theta times r times 1 minus the cosine of theta d theta. Now we can factor out the r's because r times r is r squared from 0 to 2 pi. And then we have 1 minus the cosine of theta times 1 minus the cosine of theta, which you would square that, d theta. So now we have r squared going from 0 to 2 pi. And then we can expand that as a perfect square trinomial, which we get 1 minus 2 times the cosine of theta plus cosine squared theta d theta. Now, before we integrate, we want to convert this cosine squared theta using our trig identities and use the half angle formula. So cosine squared theta is the same thing as 1 half times 1 plus cosine 2 theta. And now what we're going to do is then take the antiderivative. So we have r squared, which is the constant. And we, if you look here, if you distribute this 1 half to both of these terms, you're going to get plus 1 half times 1, which is 1 half plus 1, which gives you 3 halves. And if you take the antiderivative of 3 halves, it becomes 3 halves theta. Minus the antiderivative of 2 cosine theta is 2 sine theta. And then the antiderivative of 1 half cosine 2 theta becomes plus 1 fourth sine 2 theta. And now we need to plug in our upper and lower limits. And by substituting our upper and lower limits, we would get r squared times 3 halves times 2 pi, which gives you 3 pi r squared.